In this video, we are going to be learning all about partitioning line segments. First off, the word partition just means to break something into parts. So in these problems, we're going to be taking a line segment and breaking it into parts or partitioning it. The way we partition it is according to a given ratio. And a ratio is all, only just a comparison of two numbers. So for instance, 1 to 2 is a ratio. And we're going to see it really commonly written with a colon. But when we read that out loud, we kind of say the word 2 in there. So there's two methods to doing these problems. There's a graphing method. That's where we plot the segment. Okay, when we plot, we want to plot the two points and connect them, but we want to connect them definitely with some sort of straight edge. That's going to help the graphing method work a little bit more successfully. We're going to then partition that segment into a certain number of equal parts, and that number of equal parts will depend upon the numbers that are given to us in the problem. And then finally, we choose a point that relates to the ratio. Now, if you didn't want to do it with a graphing method, you could use a formula, although it's a little complicated to remember. So the formula to find the x-coordinate is you're going to take the first number from the ratio over the sum of the numbers in the ratio. Okay, so to get the fraction, we're using the ratio x2 minus x1 in parentheses plus x1. And then the formula to get the y-coordinate is really the same exact thing, but just replacing all of the x's with y's. So when we do some sample problems, I will show you how we would actually plug values in here for the formula method. First, let's talk a little bit more about partitioning. Number one says, using the graph on the right, separate the segment into five congruent parts, and we're gonna explain how we did this. So the graph gives us negative four, negative two, and one eight. We see there's a nice straight line connecting them. And what we're gonna basically do is we're going to separate it into five equal parts. And this might, be, might seem like a little bit of estimating or eyeballing it at first, uh, but we're gonna talk about a method that we could actually use to help us. So I'm just gonna plot some points, and these are partition points. And you can see that now that line segment has five little pieces to it or little parts to it, and that's how we partitioned it. So we can, like I said, just eyeball it and estimate it. But really what we're doing is we're utilizing the slope. If I look from negative 4, negative 2 to 1, 8, I'm really going up 10 boxes, and I'm going to the right 5 boxes. Based on that, if I split that in half or if they reduce that, I'm going to get 2 to 1, right, up to over 1. Okay, if I divided both those values by 5. So if I take the slope at negative 4, negative 2, and apply it up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, that's going to give me each of my new points. Okay. So where it says explain how we did this, I'm going to say that I used the simplified or the reduced slope. Now, once we have our segment partitioned, we're just going to be able to quickly answer the question. So I'm just going to erase some of this just so we're starting pretty much out on blank canvas besides our partition points. So it says, what are the coordinates of the point that creates a 1 to 4 ratio? And you can see below that that we're going to answer about some other ratios as well. But when we talk about, let's say, a 1 to 4 ratio, what this really is, is we're looking for one little piece on the left of the partition point and four little pieces on the right of the partition point. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. And our answer has to be one of the points that we plotted on the line segment. This point right here creates a 1 to 4 ratio. To the left of it, I'm going to scribble over it, there's one congruent part. And I'll scribble differently. Over to the right, there are four congruent parts. That's our 1 to 4 ratio. Okay. So erasing all of those scribbles just to look at it again, that point, and that point is negative 3, 0, so I'll answer that here too. That point splits it into the 1 to 4 ratio. The next point 
going up the line basically splits it into a two to three ratio. There are two little pieces to the left, three pieces to the right. That point is negative two, two. And I'm basically gonna be able to continue up the line and identify the three to two ratio and as well as the four to one ratio. And I'll fill in those coordinates here. So three to two ratio is negative one, four. Four to one ratio is zero, six. So on most problems, they're just going to ask us about one of those ratios, not all four of them in this case. Um, but that's how we're using each of those partition points, basically. All right, we're going to look at some other samples. Um, number two, a segment is partitioned into a two to seven ratio. How many total congruent sections does this segment have? Well, remember that first number means how many pieces are to the left. The second number means how many pieces are to the right. So I know to the partition point, compared to the partition point, there are two sections on the left. There are seven on the right. So there must be nine total sections or total segments from that initial segment. All right, number three. Find the coordinates of point P that partitions AB with negative 3, 1 and B2, 6 such that the ratio of AP to PB is 3 to 2. So I'm going to start by plotting my two initial points. And I'm going to make a nice straight line segment connecting them. Now I'm going to break my line segment into congruent pieces. And again, we could do this by eyeballing, but to give it a little bit more of a strategic method, we know there's got to be three segments to the left and two to the right. So we need five total pieces here. So you can see on my graph, I've gone ahead and I have plotted points so that there are five little line segments. And we want to pick the one point that splits it into a 3 to 2 ratio. So that's the point that's going to give you three sections to the left, two to the right. And that's going to be this point right here. So our answer, point P, is basically going to be 0, comma 4. Now I mentioned before that there's a formula method you could use. If I wanted to do that as an alternative or even as a way to check my answer, I certainly could. I would take my two points and I'm gonna label them x1, y1, x2, y2 just to organize it before I start. And the formula says to take the first number of the ratio over the sum of the numbers in the ratio. So the first number in the ratio is three. The sum, that's how many total pieces we have, is five. Then it's parentheses x2 minus x1 plus x1. And if I simplify this, I am going to get zero. I'm going to do the same thing for the y's. It's going to be the same fraction, but now I'm going to just change out my points. And when I do that, I get 4. So my x coordinate is 0, my y coordinate is 4, and I got 0, 4 this way too. So again, remember our answers should match here. One is just using a graphing method, while one's using a formula. Okay, for the remainder of the problems, for 4, 5, and 6, I am going to just be using the graphing method. So for number 4, find the coordinates of point P that partitions AB with A negative 8, 7 and b2 negative 8, and we want a 2 to 3 ratio this time. So I'm going to start off by graphing, plotting my points, and making a nice straight line connecting them. So again, you can certainly choose to use the formula method as an alternative or an addition. I'm just going to stick with the graphing method here. Once I have plotted my points, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start partitioning my line segment. And I know I need, again, just like the other problem, five total parts. So sometimes when the line segment is large like this, it might be harder to partition the segment into the congruent parts. So just a reminder that you could use the slope. I see that the slope in this problem 
our rise over run is that we are going uh, down a total of 15 units and we are going to the right, the run is 10 units. So if I was doing rise over run, 15 over 10, the simplified version of that is three over two. And really here, this is gonna be a negative three over two and negative 15 over 10, since the slope is negative. So using that, start at A, down three over two, there's your first point, down three over two, and I can continue that pattern if I need to and I have trouble finding the points otherwise. All right, we want to pick the point that has two sections to the left, three to the right, and that is this point right here. Here are my two sections on the left, and here are my three sections on the right. So the coordinates of that point, so point P in this case, are negative 4, positive 1. All right, let's repeat this and let's do it on number five, same, same steps, new points. So I'm starting by plotting again. Making a nice straight line segment. And on this problem, I should have six total parts. Since the ratio is five to one, the sum of those numbers is six. So I know that after I partition, I should end up with six congruent pieces. I'm gonna pick the point that splits it so that there are five sections on the left, one on the right, and that is this point right here. And that point P has the coordinates four, five. All right, for number six, find the coordinates of point P and we have our two new points and we want a one-to-one -one ratio this time. So this is the first time we've seen it in this video where the two numbers are equal to one another. We're gonna talk about what that means. So I'm looking for the point that is going to split it so that there's one section on the left, one on the right. So I'm really looking for what's like dead center in this line segment. I really only need to plot one point and now you could see I have my two congruent sections in there. So we're just left to find the coordinates of this point. So the coordinates of that point P in this problem would be negative six, positive three. Okay, as a reminder, you can use the formula method for any of these to check your work or as another option. Just to round out this, in number seven, it says in question six, what geometry term could be used to describe point P? Well, P is the point right in the middle of that line segment. If we think about that very literally, the point in the middle, the geometry term we could use to describe that is midpoint. Okay, hopefully in this video, you understood how to partition line segments into given ratios.